Epic kayaks and surf skis have become known world over as quality premium products. Greg Barton and Oscar Chalupski behind them and many of them have become successful. The V10 and V12 surf skis and the V10 Sport for the intermediate paddlers are well established. New on the market is the V8. Distinctive, short, wide. Let's have a look what it feels like when you push it out into the surf. Well, pretty much as expected, the overwhelming impression you get from this boat is that it is stable. It is rock solid in the boat. And all of that comes from the width and the flatness of the boat. It's a wide boat. It's probably the widest ski that's on the market at the moment, especially when you compare them to the conventional skis that you see out in the series. It's a big boat. It's the shortest boat and the widest boat that you can find in this particular class of surf ski. And when you're sitting in the cockpit, one of the things you sense up front is almost like you're sitting in the cockpit of a wild water boat. There's an enormous amount of volume forward of your feet. Cutaways at the front, these are nice and stylish, they look contemporary, but very important because you do need to be able to get your paddles in close when a boat is this big. Back of the seat well, you'll find there's a huge width to the boat. You'll see when you look at the hull that that contributes to the stability, but one of the things that it does do, it creates a nice thick chunky gunnel here where a lot of boats are very slim, and this is where a lot of the breakages happen, so this actually adds strength and reinforcing. Uh, the seat well is very comfortable, it's cut away at the back, this is traditionally where it hurts people, so there's a neat cutaway here. Some nice little epic touches in the seat well, um, for example they've got a, a little hatch for a water bottle here, which I initially thought was going to be a complete no-no, unexpectedly it's actually not an issue, it doesn't get in your way at all, if anything it takes a little bit of water volume away, and it's not intrusive at all. Pedals are beautifully set up, they're easily adjustable, there's a little bit of elastic in the front for an extra water bottle. It's got the uh, new rubber insert bungs rather than the screw-in bung plugs. And importantly, if you are using these plugs, please make sure you use one that's got a slit in it because these are prone to popping out. If there's a compression, particularly on the front deck, these can pop out and that little slit prevents that from happening. So have a look at the bottom. Where does the feeling of this boat come from? It's interesting. An enormous flat area. A huge big flat section here is what contributes to the stability. The minus though is that with this, this enormous flat area and the width of the boat, you do definitely lose performance. If your aspiration is simply to get out into the surf, to have some fun, to play, it's wonderful for playing in the surf. Maybe you want a boat to sit at your beach house, at your marina or on your yacht, which you can use to chug around in and you have no great performance aspirations, then this is a great boat. It's beautifully finished, it's light, it's rigid. This comes from their China factory. Um, and it is a magnificently turned out boat, but then I guess that's what you get for with the price tag. This is an entry level construction, costs you 13,000 Rand. If you're looking for the carbon and Kevlar construction with all the bells and whistles, super light, super rigid, be ready to pay about 21,000. man first started to explore. The journey was as inspiring as the destination. Many travelers never even had a destination. But while the world today has become impatient, those travellers do still exist. Those who look for their destination as they go, who will be disappointed if they find it, and who are only lost without the unknown. Sometimes we search for things that don't even exist. But we wait for those times when the stars align and everything goes perfectly. But sometimes, in the blink of an eye, things go horribly wrong.
we stop, we wonder, and sometimes we give up. But sometimes you just have to buck up and huck it. We were a group of friends and professional kayakers visiting the Scandinavian paddling meccas of Iceland and Norway. Our two-month mission to find new rivers starts in the North Atlantic volcanic landmass of Iceland, a place known among kayakers for its rugged terrain and spectacular waterfalls. Eventually, with a four-day block of good weather on the forecast, it was time to return to our main mission, the legendary Glamorga River. And right off the bat, we just got to some epic rapids. We were running good quality class five exhibition whitewater.
After a good night's sleep, we realized we had discovered a new multi-day classic. The type of place that you'd want to bring your friends to, without a video camera, to simply enjoy the world-class white water. After my flight, you know, I took some photos from the air and we've got a very straight, steep canyon here where it's very clear that the whole river goes underground at least three times. Heave ho up and over the hill, boys. It's easy to dream, but putting those dreams into action is where the, the sense of achievement really takes place for me. Is, when you look at a map and you pick out a river and you talk about paddling it, that's all well and good, but to find yourself sitting in that river, putting the thoughts into action, I think that's when the magic really happens and, and that's something that I get a huge amount of satisfaction out of. This trip to Iceland and Norway was basically had two main objectives. The first objective was to find some, some new and never paddled uh, white water in Iceland and Norway. And the second objective was to actually create a video, a movie out of that. And without a doubt, we achieved both of those objectives. Um, unfortunately, my trip was cut a little short. Well, yeah, I guess you could kind of say that it was coming. Um, I've been kayaking at that sort of level for well over 20 years. <clears throat> I've run uh, hundreds of waterfalls, and up until that moment, I'd never had a serious injury. So I guess, you know, it's a numbers game. Uh, yeah, my number certainly came up. Um, and. It was just the tiniest little mistake in body position, basically. If I had just changed my body position slightly from that to that, I probably would have hit the bottom, rolled up, waved to the crowd, and smiled and paddled off. The last thing I want to do on a waterfall is to land too flat. So I remember throwing my weight forward. And it was just at that moment, as I threw my weight forward, I just forgot about the hand position. And uh, obviously, a split second later, there was this impact, which is unlike anything I've ever felt before. Um, I remember getting thrown back on the back deck of the boat. Everything was just violent. Like, as I say, like I've never felt at the bottom of a waterfall before. And then, you know, a few seconds later, the sort of melee kind of subsided a bit. And I got that sort of clarity of thought back again. And I remember thinking, I remember thinking, just hold on for a second, okay? My paddle had been ripped out of my hands by this stage. Um, I sort of I tried to figure out what was going wrong and why my hand roll wasn't working, and tried a second attempt, and then I realized that my left arm was just not listening to me at all. It was just basically, yeah, it was just basically flapping. Uh, it was a horrible, horrible sensation. At that moment, I kind of came half out the boat, and I grabbed onto the boat with my, with my good arm and I just looked across <clears throat> at Steve and, uh, and Rush and I could see that they were already jumping into their boats to come and help. So all I had to do was just hang on a few more moments and wait for them to come and, and basically help me out of that situation. Will I go back and conquer the beast? Um, you know what? Initially I thought, I thought, um, Maybe I'd bitten off more than I can chew. But that was, as I say, within the first sort of few seconds afterwards, you know, heading to the hospital and thinking, oh man, I'm gonna miss out on so much kayaking because of this. But, um, you know, I'm afraid it's something that's just in me. And uh, I'm definitely gonna run more waterfalls. 
And if I get a chance to go back to Iceland, I'm definitely going to go and visit that waterfall again. You know, we were lucky to catch it at such a perfect level on the day. There's every chance that we might get there and the water level would be too high or too low and that would preclude a run on that particular day. But if we were to get there and the, and the level was perfect, someone would just be saying to me, it's time to get this one right.